Well, hey crafty friends, happy Sunday to you. My name is Heidi Scott, this is DIY Dreaming, and this is Christ and Crafting for this week. I'm super excited about the projects that we're gonna be doing because they're very different from anything that I have done in a long while. Um, one of them especially. And then I have um, something really good to talk about, which is the difference between history and fairy tales. Um, so, and that we'll be talking about the history of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So, as you're hopping on, say hi. I'd love to know who's here with me. Um, let me know if you have any questions along the way. Feel free to sprinkle, 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 all that normal stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna be using today are something that I have been seeing quite a bit of lately, but I have never personally tried using them. And they are, sorry about that little glare, they are stretched canvases in black. So you can get the kind like this that are, um, let's see, well they're the reg about the regular thickness. We'll open this and I'll show you. You can also get them like this that are basically flat, okay? And everything that I'm using today came from my local Walmart, so you don't even have to go somewhere fancy to find these. Um, so we're gonna be doing two different techniques. We're gonna be doing a black on black kind of thing, and then we're gonna be using a palette knife. Um, but everything's gonna be basically black and white and super beautiful. I hope you love it. All right, so these are my examples, just two that I did before I came live and we'll be doing a couple more. This one is the black on black, and I wanna see if you can see it. Do you guys see that? Do you see the black background? Which way do I need to go? Um, so I'll tell you how I did this one. And then this one I did with a stencil, and then also I used a palette knife to create a really nice I think really nice border around the edge of it. So these are the two techniques that I'm going to be showing you today and we'll come back to these in a minute. All right, so let's see. Which one should we do first? Let's do the palette knife one first. And we're going to be using some beautiful faith-related Christmas stencils from magnoliadiy.com. And if you want links at the end, I'll be glad to get them to you. This is a beautiful stencil. It's back in stock. Um, it sold out pretty quickly. And it says, Jesus is the reason for the season. And this is the primary theme that I wanna talk about how this is history. It's historical fact. It's not fairy tale stuff. Um, so let's use this. But first of all, I'm gonna open this canvas. This is, let's see. I think this is 11 by 14, okay? And this is what they look like. You can also do reverse canvases with these and then just use the black side of the canvas when you take it off of the stretcher. Um, but okay, and these were around $3, $3 a piece, roughly for this size and around two, 250 for the smaller size. So this is what the front of it looks like, and this is what the back of it looks like. And like I said, I believe this one is 11 by 14. I'm not gonna do anything to prepare it at all. Um, and I'm gonna be using this stencil, which I'm not going to fuzz this because I've used this stencil so much that I really don't think it needs to be fuzzed, but if I did need to fuzz it, I would use either a fuzzing towel or my sweater or a pair of jeans, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna take it off the backing and we're gonna lay it on here and I'm gonna eyeball it. We're gonna do the stencil and then we're gonna do the palette knife, which I think adds such a pretty effect to it. This is a beautiful stencil. Um, okay. Okay, and it's not super sticky because I've used it so much, <laughs> but that doesn't matter. Let's 
filling to see what do I fill behind it. Okay, so I'm going to be using chalk paste from MagnoliaDIY.com in white. And um, what I'm gonna do to get started is just stir it up. This is a pretty new jar I love. I don't know if you're like me, but I love breaking into a new jar of chalk paste and just using it when it's full. Oh, it's awesome. Okay, and I'm just gonna put some globs of chalk paste on there. And then I'm using a one of the small cut apart squeegees that I haven't actually cut it apart yet. And I'm just gonna hold my stencil down and go over it with pushing the chalk paste through the holes. You can see how super easy this is. And to all, I had too much chalk paste. To all of my friends out there that think that stenciling is hard, oh my word. I could not draw a pony to save my life. <laughs> I really couldn't. Not anything that would be recognizable anyways. But I can stencil one with a stencil easy. And that is what I love about stencils, is they, they allow you to expand your creative expression even when you don't have the natural abilities. Okay, I'm just looking to see if I have anything else. I'm gonna resist the urge to keep going over and over and over that. This is what it looks like. And I'm gonna pull my stencil up. And hope I did a good job. Yes, I did. Oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful stencil. If Jesus is the reason for the Christmas season for you, and if you love this stencil, I would recommend that you grab it ASAP because I know they'll sell out of it again before Christmas is over. And um, you can, these are reusable. You just put them back on your backing sheet after you spray them with cool water to clean them off. And you can reuse them, reuse them, reuse them, reuse them, pull them back out next year, the year after, the year after. So look how pretty that is. Okay, we're gonna take it just one little bit further. And I'm gonna use a palette knife. I don't know if you've ever fiddled around with these. Um, these right here came from Dollar Tree in a package of three or four different shapes. This one I got in Canada at a Canadian dollar Rama store, and um, it's a metal palette knife, and I actually like this one a lot better than the plastic ones, but the plastic ones will do. Um, and so we're going to be using chalk paste, the same stuff that we just used. I'm just going to take a little blob and put it on a paper plate. We're not fancy. And then I'm taking my palette knife and you hold your palette knife kind of like this. And I'm just putting some on the back side of my palette knife. And then you're basically just going to kind of do these random around the edge. And it's, oh. it, what happens is the bumpy, parts of whatever you're putting this on this way, grab your medium. Okay, and that is it. What do you think? Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, okay, so, what I have discovered with these black stretch canvases is that, you know, I love my clear matte spray sealer that I normally use, but ju oops, just for fun, I tried today using the clear glossy sealer. Both of these came from Walmart. I paid attention to the price. It was $3.97 for a can. And they asked for my driver's license. 
I guess I had to prove I was older than 18 to buy spray paint. Very strange. But maybe that's uh, just something weird in Georgia. I don't know. Um, anyway, so I used gloss today, and I'll show you that in just a minute. I love the way it looks on the black stretched canvas. So look how easy. Where am I? <laughs> I don't know where I am. Look how easy this was and how pretty it is. And how gorgeous this could just look sitting in a book stand um, or it could be a beautiful gift um, in fact these are so affordable I would make like 10 of these and give them to your 10 closest family members and friends whatever size you like but this 11 by 14 works the best with this stencil so let me set this over here so we can go on and I can show you the next technique. Okay, so before I was live, I took my, looks terrible, <laughs> my Victorian pattern stencil that I've had for a year and a half. I've used this thing probably way more than you should, but maybe 50 or 60 times, seriously. Um, I've used it twice today already, okay? I used this and some black chalk paste on this canvas and on the one before. I just laid it down and then I applied black chalk paste. We're gonna do that in a minute, but I wanna show you what this looks like. And this is what I got. Can you guys see it? <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, what this reminds me of, I didn't paint this canvas black. No, somebody just asked me. It came black, and I've been noticing these in the craft stores, and I just, I don't know, um, I grabbed some recently, and I thought, let's play with them and see what they can do, and um, a couple of cr other crafters that are friends of mine had been doing some different projects using black on black, and I thought, I want to try that as a background for today's projects. Okay, so this is what black chalk paste on a black stretched canvas looks like. And I sprayed it with the clear gloss spray sealer. Why? Well, because when I lay the next stencil over the top of it, I don't want that next stencil, which is this brand new one, to pull up any of this chalk paste. And also the gloss, the gloss um, sealer kind of makes the pattern a little more, little more visible. And you know what this reminds me of? Is it reminds me of those black velvet <laughs> paintings that were popular in the 1970s. Um, but it's just gorgeous. Oh my gosh. So this black stretched canvas came from Walmart. It's nothing special until you get started and you do something like this. So we're going to come back in just a second and do this one on it. But I want to show you how you do this black on black. And I thought it would be fun to use this stencil, which is also not new. I also love this one. That's called Lace Berries. All right. And I'm going to use it on one of these. Um, okay, it is best quality um, black stretch canvas, two pack from Walmart. Cut this open and pull one of them out. I'm not going to do anything to prepare it because you don't need to. And I'm not going to fuzz this stencil right here because I've used it a ton and it barely has any stick left to it, but it still works just fine. So I think that I will probably stencil it um, with something later that is a up and down kind of a print. So I'm going to do my lace and berries running like this way.
And because this does have a very distinct pattern to it, I kind of want to pay attention to where I'm putting it. Okay, let me see if I have it on there straight at all. This is the best way to check, I think. Okay, so for all of you out there who um, are wondering what can you do when your stencils aren't super sticky anymore, the answer really is nothing. <laughs> There's nothing you can really do to them. If they have some like fibers stuck in the back, the sticky side, you can soak them and use your fingers to kind of roll those fibers up and away. Um, you can use a antibacterial wipe on the back of them, and sometimes that will improve your stickiness just a little bit. But um, I don't recommend using any kind of spray adhesive on them. And the thing is, even when they're not super sticky like this one, they still work just fine. So we're going to use black chalk paste on this, and I'm going to show you how you get this uh, beautiful black on black background look. So this is just chalk paste, and the stencil I'm using right now is called Lace and Berries. And because it's not super sticky, I'm just going slow and taking my time so I can hold it down. Although with the black on black pattern, I don't know if you could tell if, you, if it sh shifted at all and you weren't didn't have a perfect impression. I don't know. I don't think you could probably really even tell. Okay, now I'm pulling the excess off. This is what it looks like. And it's so pretty. Okay. Oh my gosh. It looks embossed, you guys. It's the craziest thing. Okay, I'm just sticking my stencil in my little tub over here. I'm gonna clean my hands off. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Can you see that? Which way is up? I think this way is up. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely gorgeous. So it will take um, probably about 30 minutes to be thoroughly dry, and then I will spray it with one coat of clear gloss spray sealer, and then I'll do another stencil over the top. Um, I wish you were standing right here with me so you could see in person just how amazing that is. It's the coolest thing. So this is just black chalk paste on a black stretched canvas with the all over pattern. All right, let's set this over here so I don't mess it up. And we're going to do the one that I had ready from before, this one right here. I did this before I came live. It's 11 by 14, it's using the Victorian lace pattern. Okay, and we're gonna do it horizontal. Um, so this is a brand spanking new stencil. I always label the back of them with a Sharpie. And I am gonna fuzz this because it's brand new. And it's, uh-oh, got something all over my hands. Give me just a second. And it's, it's brand new and it's, uh, What do I have all over my fingers? Something. It's brand new and it needs to be fussed a little bit. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so I'm gonna use my fuzzing cloth, but I could also use a sweater like this that doesn't have a ton of lint on it. Or I could use my jeans, or I could use a low lint tea towel, that kind of thing. And I'm not gonna fuzz this too, too terribly crazy because like I said, I sprayed the um, canvas with a glossy sealer. So, look how pretty it is. All right, and I don't think it matters which direction I go. Let's see, we'll do this one. And I'm just gonna kind of get my placement on here. You could also come back and do the palette knife thing on it, on the edges if you want, but I think that might make it a little bit busy. And just the combination of the background, I got on here. Um, I don't think it needs anything extra on it. That looks reasonably straight, okay. So we're gonna use white chalk paste again. Just going to stir it up and a little tighter. Put some blobs on here. I'm going to get a small cut apart squeegee, and I'm just taking my time and pushing. The chalk paste through the holes in the stencil. Ooh, I felt a little ripple there. I hope I don't have a mess. I don't know if you're like me, but I always overestimate the, how much <laughs> chalk paste I'm going to need, it seems like. And I need way less than what I usually think. Okay, so I'm just pulling the excess globs off. And, ooh, I hope, I hope I did, oops, I see a spot that I missed. Right here. I hope I didn't mess it up. Mm, a teeny bit, but that's okay. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And I may be able to come back. I'll show you where it's the area where it's a little teeny bit, bit um, messed up. I could feel as I was doing it that there was an air bubble in there. It's the T right there. So I might be able to scratch when it's fully dry some of that with a toothpick off. But look how pretty that is with the background. Is that gorgeous or what? I absolutely love it. Okay. So those were the projects that I wanted to show you. This was the palette knife, this one, and then this one. And I want to talk to you about this stencil right here in just a second. And then this was the um, black background with a stencil over the top. And that's what this one is right here as well. So I'll get pictures of everything close up hopefully in good light so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, but, okay, this one, I used this beautiful stencil that is a church and it says, then sings my soul. And I think that's a perfect song for the Christmas season. Um, it's all about amazing grace, which God started that story of his grace with the birth of his son, Jesus. So that is that project. And then this project, I used this beautiful stencil, which I should have over here somewhere. Let's see, I wanted to show it to you. Hmm. 
Well, I'm not knowing exactly where it is. Oh, here it is. It's under this somewhere. Here we go. These are the two stencils that I wanted to show you. This is the Then Sings My Soul stencil, which you can use this just with the church or the whole thing, or just Then Sings My Soul. And this is the Luke 211. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 211. We're going to be reading this verse in just a minute. And with that, I just stenciled it in white chalk paste on this. And then I used my palette knife to create this border. And then I sprayed the whole thing once it was dry, which is what I'll do with this one, with that glossy sealer. Again, just to protect it. So, let me just clean off my desk. I'll get out the, my Bible and let's talk about the difference between fairy tales and um, history. And uh, I don't know, think back to when you were a child, did you, were you the type of child that loved fairy tales? I was, I had this book of fairy tales um, that somebody had given me that I would read like every night. And I don't know why, um, I did not grow up in a family that was very, um, I don't know, we weren't very active in our faith, and I don't suppose that I really even understood what any of that meant. I had great parents. I'm not saying anything bad about them. I'm just saying that my growing up was not the way my life is now. Um, so I loved fairy tales, and I loved how in every fairy tale there was always some savior who would come and save the whole situation. And I guess that's what I was longing for as a child, even though I didn't know what it was. So, um, as we go into the Christmas season, I, I want to remember what the purpose and the point of this, the Christmas season is, the real one, okay? I love all the Santa business and, you know, all those fun traditions. I'm not saying those aren't super important, but I want to keep the main thing, the main thing this year. And um, I don't know, maybe you feel the same way as me. So let me just pray and then we'll go into the Bible. I'll tell you where I'm going. We'll talk about, um, if you don't have a Bible yet, I can give you a link for a place that you can order a life application study Bible, which is the kind that I have. And um, I don't have any connection to the place. I just want you to have a Bible that you can hold in your hands and read and then write your life in. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Thank you for the Christmas season, Lord. Thank you for the, the birth of your son, Jesus. Thank you for beginning your story of redemption with the birth of Jesus. And thank you for preserving all the details about that, about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection in your word so that all these thousands of years later, we can read it, understand it. You can speak to us through your word and we can know that it is the truth, it is real. So Lord, as we um, go into these verses, I just pray that you'll give me the words to say, to express the things that you would like me to express and that the people who are listening now and in the future, um, that this will be an encouragement for them and that you'll, you'll do something with these words, with your word, Lord. You're, you say in your word that, that your word, you say in the Bible that your word never goes out void, that it always accomplishes the purpose for which you are sending it. So I just thank you that I can be part of sending your message out 
and I pray that it will do everything that you would have it do. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, I see lots of you guys on. Okay, so I don't have a lot of notes today because I just, I want to spend some time actually reading. But what I want to talk about is the difference between history and fairy tales. Okay, fairy tales, like I was telling you earlier, I loved them as a little girl because there was always some figure that came in and saved the day, that saved everything, that made everything right. And I think that what I was longing for but didn't even know it was a relationship with my savior who I didn't really even know at the time. Um, so fairy tales are often very nonspecific. A lot of times they start out with something like, long, long ago in a land far, far away lived a princess, blah, 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 blah. Um, and while fairy tales are good for conveying, just for entertainment and for, I don't know, making you feel good, they aren't reality or truth, okay? History is reality. It is truth. And um, the history in the Bible is his story. Um, it's his story, Jesus' story, basically. And um, so let's start reading about Jesus' story. And let's start oops, in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 1, and the very first verse through the fourth. Okay. So I want you to notice how the book of Luke begins, because that is very important to what I'm saying. Okay. Verse 1, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the Lord. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, and I'll, I'll tell you what that means in just a minute, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Okay, so the book of Luke was written by Luke. He was um, a physician. He was a very um, detailed kind of person. And what he was doing in the book of Luke was recording, he was investigating and recording the events of Jesus's life. And um, let's see, what does it say? It says something here good about what the point, the purpose of the book of Luke is to present an accurate account of the life of Jesus and to present Jesus as the perfect human and savior. So this didn't start long, long, long ago in a land far, far away. No, it starts by saying, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the Lord. Therefore, since I myself, this is Luke, have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Okay, so Theophilus was some type of a, um, a ruler that was a, a follower, a Jesus follower, and Luke was writing this book to this person to give a detailed account after carefully investigating and interviewing eyewitnesses. Okay, so it's completely different. So that's the first four verses of the first chapter. And then when you go into the second chapter, this is where it's all about Jesus being born in Bethlehem. Okay, and I want you to also notice 
the specifics in this. Okay, it's chapter 2, verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. Okay, so it's specifically set during the days of Caesar Augustus when... Um, Quinarius was the governor of Syria. It doesn't say long, long, long ago. It's specific. It's factual. It's tied to um, things that are recorded in other historical documents besides just the Bible. Okay, so then it says, so Joseph, so Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, Ju to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged um, to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Um, okay, so then verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into the heavens, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at, the, at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, I love this verse, treasured up all these things and pondered them in, their, in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Um, so you can, I, I just think it's so interesting for those people who want to say that the Bible is just a book of stories. Um, you know, how fact-specific it is. It's not like a fairy tale. It is tied to specific events in world history. And um, I wanted to read a couple of the notes in my Bible that are really good on that point. And oh, and speaking about Bibles, so I'm using my Life Application Study Bible. Um, it has great notes that a lot of times when I'm confused, they can kind of um, give some background that help me understand better. There's maps, there's um, character sketches, there's just information, all kinds of historical information too. And um, I think it is so super important to have a paper Bible. Um, I actually have had this one for over 20 years, maybe, I don't know, 23 years, something like that. And I have written my life in it. Um, so some pages like this one, Some pages are just hard to even <laughs> read because there's so much chicken scratch on them, but that just gives it so much meaning. Um, so if you don't have a paper Bible, just say, just let me know in the comments that you would like a link to a place where you can go and look. It's a Christian bookstore. Again, I don't have anything to do with it. I don't make any money on it. Um, 
my only interest in, in this is just that um, I want you to be able to have God's Word in your hands if you don't already. They're affordable and you can get it in large print or regular print. You can also get whichever translation speaks the best to you. For me, it's the NIV, New International Version, but your, your language that speaks most clearly to you might be different. And they have all different ones there. So let me know and I'd be glad to get you that link. Um, okay, so I wanted to read you the two notes. Okay. This says Luke is the only gospel writer who related the events that he recorded to world history. His account was addressed to a predominantly Greek audience that would have been interested and familiar with the political situation. Palestine was under the rule of the Roman Empire, Emperor Caesar Augustus, and the first Roman emperor was in charge. The Roman rulers, considered to be gods, stood in contrast to the ba tiny baby in the manger who was truly God in the flesh. Um, so this, this account where you find the most information about the birth of our Savior was tied to history. It wasn't long, long ago in the land far, far away, like Star Wars or fairy tales. Okay, the other note I wanted to read, which I think is really interesting, is it says God controls all history by the decree of Emperor Augustus. Jesus was born in the very town prophesied for his birth in the book of Micah, um, chapter 5, verse 2, even though his parents did not live there. So it's so cool how God works all things out, how within the historical time that was going on, God orchestrated it so that Joseph and Mary would have to go to Bethlehem for this uh, census, and that while they were there, they would give birth to Jesus. Um, so I just thought that was really cool. And then the other thought that I wanted to share, and then I'm not going to take a long time with this, but I do encourage you to read all of the book of Luke if you have time. The other idea I want to um, talk about is that God came to the earth in a form of a baby. Yes. But I really hope that your view of Jesus is not stuck in the view of a baby, because that's just how he first appeared on the scene. Um, and this note here says, although our first picture of Jesus is as a baby in a manger, it must not be our last. The, the Christ child in the manger has been made into beautiful, into a beautiful Christmas scene but we cannot leave him there. This tiny, helpless baby lived an amazing life, died for us, ascended to heaven, and will come back to this earth as king of kings. Christ will rule the word, world and judge all people according to their decisions about him. And then it says, do you still picture Jesus as a baby in a manger or is he your Lord? Make sure you don't underestimate Jesus. Let him grow up in your life. And um, my thought was just to, um, that whole, the whole uh, Christmas scene of a baby in a manger is very sweet and picturesque, but it doesn't tell the whole story. It just tells the start of his story. And um, Jesus was the creative force. He was with the Father in the beginning he spoke the world into existence. He conquered sin and death on our behalf, and he will rule in and reign forever. Um, so don't keep your feelings and thoughts about him as that of a tiny baby in a manger. Just remember that that was just how he appeared on the scene, how, how God brought him to earth. And that is not all that he is. So um, that's pretty much what I wanted to really talk about. 
Um, I hope that you liked our projects today. I'm gonna say a quick prayer to pray us out, but let me just show you these real quick. If you have any questions, let me know. Oops, and let's remember that Jesus is the reason for the season and that this is history, his story, not fairy tale. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that we can spend looking at your word and thinking about how Jesus first came to earth and what Christmas is really all about. Lord, I just pray that it will be an encouragement to people. It will be a reminder to them of what, what the true meaning is and not to get lost in all the other hoopla and Santa Claus ho, ho, ho and all that business, but to keep at the forefront of our minds and our hearts what Christmas is really all about. Lord, so I just thank you for the great, great privilege of being able to read your word and to talk to these people. Thank you for giving me the words to say, Lord. And I just want to lift up people out there. I know that pretty much everyone, well, not pretty much, everyone has things that they're going through. Hard things, sad things, frustrating things, disappointments, heartbreaks, all mixed in with the good of life, but we all have all of that. And while I don't know what all of that is for the people that are watching, you do, Lord. You know all of that and you love each one of those people. So I just pray that you will let them feel your presence. Let them know how much you love them. Let them understand that you are in charge and that you are working things out for good even when we can't understand it or see it or feel it or touch it or even comprehend it um, so I just ask that you will make your presence and your love felt this Christmas season Lord and so I lift up all those those things, those prayer requests to you. And um, oh, I just pray that this will be a amazing Christmas for all of us, that you'll help us to stay centered and focused on you. And I pray all this in your precious son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. So thank you guys for joining me. Um, I hope that you liked these projects. I would be glad to get you information on any of the things that I used. If you want information on the stencils or the chalk paste, um, just say link in the comments. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. If you have friends or family or contacts or people in your life that you think would um, appreciate this Christ and crafting or anything else that we do here at DIY Dreaming, feel free to sprinkle. And um, if you just jumped on, like Janine did, uh, as soon as I'm finished here, you can go back and you can watch this on replay from the start. Um, whenever it's a good time for you. Hopefully this will be here <laughs> as long as Facebook is a thing. And so feel free to come back whenever is a good time for you to watch the whole thing. Alrighty, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys this week for lots of fun projects. Oh my gosh, I'm looking around my craft room and I have a lot of things to show you this week. So I hope you'll join me and uh, oh, one more thing, take two seconds to do a this or a this or to say something in the comments and check to make sure that you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming if you want to see some of the craft projects that we have coming up this week. Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. 
And, oh, and um, Janice is reminding me because she says she would like a link to the Bible study, to the place that sells the Life Application Study Bibles. I'll get that for you as soon as I hop off so you can go look. Alrighty. Take care. I'll see you guys soon.